Aeonides disease is a bacterial infection caused by Mycobacterium avium paratuberculosis, which is quite a mouthful. Um, you'll be aware that it also occurs in cattle. Young lambs are most at risk of infection, but it has a really long incubation period. So during that time, infected animals will appear healthy. Eventually, the bacteria multiplies within the wall of their intestine, but these animals lose weight, but they remain bright and they continue to eat. They infect other animals because the Yoni's disease bacteria is shed in their feces and it survives really well in the environment. So they get infected by ingesting the bacteria. So that could be with contaminated food, it could be with contaminated water, it could be with lambs searching for the teat, sucking on a mouthful of fleece, for example. So other sheep in the flock are a source of infection, as are added animals or animals straying from other holdings. Water courses, it could travel from farm to farm in water courses and it can survive for quite a long time in water. Anything where there's faeces is a risk. So if you were to spread slurry on grazing fields um, and there had been cattle passing Yonis, the Yonis disease bacteria in their faeces, then that would be a potential risk. Wildlife such as deer and rabbits can also be infected and carry it. Particularly in the later stages of infection, um, when an animal perhaps is starting to lose condition, it is possible for it to cross the placenta to the unborn lamb and it is also spread in colostrum and milk. Other species are a risk, but you get different strains. There are strains known as cattle strains. They can also infect sheep, but there are also strains that are very closely associated with sheep. And while they can infect cattle, the risk of that is much lower. When we look at the diagnoses of Yoni's disease over a 15 year period, these are in hill breed sheep. Then you can see that the peak numbers of diagnoses occur in animals between the ages of three and four. The red columns are diagnoses in ewes and the blue columns are diagnoses in tops. But you can see that you do get clinical disease in some quite young sheep. If we look at the same breakdown for terminal breeds, meat breeds, meat sires, and then you can see that we do see more tops that's possible just because they're higher value animals. Um, but you can see then we're looking at ages two, three and four. Um, but again, some diagnoses in animals down to about one year of age. There's no perfect diagnostic test for Yoni's disease. You can take a blood sample and test it for antibodies. And an animal, particularly in the earlier stages of infection, can test negative at that time. You can take a faecal sample to test for the presence of the bacteria, but they don't shed it continuously, particularly earlier on in infection, so you might miss it. Um, once you have thin animals, then post-mortem examination should give you a definitive diagnosis. So this is a bit of intestine from a sheep that's infected with Yoni's disease. And in this instance, the Yoni's disease has turned it this very kind of yellowy, orangey color. Um, and when you get a picture like that, that tells you that's a pigmented strain and they tend to be very sheep associated strains. And when we look at the data from postmortems, then we can see that there are variations in different regions in Scotland. So in this box here, we have postmortem results from 94 sheep with Yoni's disease. And you can see that this yellow section here, these are all the cases of pigmented Yoni's disease, whereas the green section are cases of non-pigmented Yoni's disease. It's quite useful information to know what you have on your farm because the pigmented ones, they tend to be more likely to test positive in blood tests and faecal tests and they are less likely to infect cattle. So these are important things to know when it helps, it helps you to choose what tests to do and whether you need to be concerned about your cattle and thinking about grazing management to protect them, particularly if your cattle are in a health scheme. But as you can see, the results from 73 sheep with Yoni's disease in the north of Scotland, a much bigger proportion of these were the non-pigmented types of Yoni's disease. So how can you reduce the risk? If you have a diagnosis of Yoni's disease and you can identify the lambs born to that particular ewe, 
then you shouldn't keep them as replacements because they're at higher risk of also developing Yoni's disease as they get older. A lot of it hinges on reducing exposure to the bacteria in faeces, so reducing faecal contamination of fleece and teats around lambing. So you're protecting the young lamb because it's the young animals that are most susceptible to becoming infected and that infection going on to lead to disease later in life. Anything that reduces stocking density will help because of the risk from water too, then an ideal world means water from clean troughs. Uh, but obviously in a lot of circ instances with sheep, that's not possible because they've got access to lots of natural water sources. Another option would be to cull your thin ewes pre-lambing. If you've got Yoni's disease, these thin ewes may be infected with Yoni's disease and they are a risk to not just their own lambs at lambing time, but they're a risk to all the other lambs um, that are in the building or the field with them. A tight lambing can help so that you're not delaying weaning and be aware of the risk from cattle colostrum. If you're using cattle colostrum, make sure that the cow it's been collected from has been tested for Yoni's disease. You want to be moving your lambs out of the lambing shed field as soon as possible, just reducing stocking density and weaning them as early as possible onto low risk grazing. Now, all these things are quite easier, easy to say, but in practice are much more challenging. And for a lot of people, the options are, are quite uh, small for what they can do. So what would be lower risk grazing? Well, lower risk grazing would be fields really that haven't been grazed by adult sheep for as long as possible. Ideally, they won't have had any slurry put on them because there's potential risk there. And if you have fields like this, for example, the picture there is a reseeded field. So obviously that's not been grazed by adult sheep and it will also be good for worm control as well. Then your lambs at weaning are, are highest priority. Other things to think about when it comes to reducing risk, beware of the potential risk from cattle, beware of the potential risk from water courses and runoff, particularly from neighbouring properties. Watch out when you're spreading slurry and grazing land. A lot of the diagnoses of Yoni's disease are made sort of in the winter months, sort of January, February time. And um, that's possible because when the nutrition perhaps isn't as good at that time of year, these ill-thriven ewes don't cope as well. And the other thing that Yoni's disease does, it makes it harder for the ewes to control their worm burdens. So that can also add to the weight loss. Don't overgraze, the bacteria survives for at least a year in soil. And then there are one or two other things suggested that again are very difficult to, to implement in most cases. Um, splitting the flock so that you're separating the younger animals for the older animals, the theory being that the older animals are more likely to be shedding the Yoni's bacteria um, and equally culling these older animals a, a year earlier. There is a vaccine available in the UK um, that can be used. You'd obviously have to look at the potential cost benefits of that. And that works by vaccinating new replacements between one and six months of age. They only need one dose in their lifetime, but you do get a lot of vaccine reactions and lumps following vaccination. And what the original vaccine studies showed were that it reduced the losses in the production costs. Fewer animals died, fewer shed the Yoni's bacteria. The ones that did shedding of the bacteria was delayed and they didn't shed as many bacteria. So all in all, what it's doing is reducing the amount of environmental contamination with the bacteria. What it absolutely won't do is eradicate Yoni, Yoni's disease from a flock. Um, so sale of vaccinated animals, you could still introduce Yoni's disease to other flocks and they will test positive in the blood test. There is a Yoni's accreditation scheme and there also recently has a monitoring scheme has been introduced, which is probably more appropriate for larger commercial flocks. You can screen your added animals using blood or faecal tests, but as I said, there is no perfect test, um, but it will just, everything just works together to reduce the risk. But what is probably most important is investigating cases of ill thrift where there's no obvious explanation 
Uh, so we tend to see thin ewes for examination at two times of year after weaning. When these thinner ewes are put on to good grazing and six to eight weeks later they, they haven't put on any weight, then those are good animals to target testing to or to get post-mortem. And the other time of year we tend to see them is after scanning time. So thin ewes that aren't in lamb and there's no obvious explanation such as broken mouths for their poor body condition. Thank you for listening. Please get in touch if you have any questions.